Oh, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show, episode number 272. That's dos siete dos. How you guys doing, my fellow amigos y amigas? Good. I'm glad you're feeling good. How am I feeling? Pretty great, man. It's been a hectic start of the year. I think I mentioned it in my previous shows, you know. I've been up to a few things. I've been going a few places. I've been hanging around, you know, being a lad. Um, the podcast has suffered somewhat, but here I am, back on the saddle, not complaining, getting back and doing what I do best. If you're new around here and if you don't show what the show's about, I am your host, Agostino Zinger. This is the Agostino Zinger Show, the number one streetwear podcast in the world. Streetwear for me encompasses different facets such as art, literature, um, design, music, fashion, current events. I cover it all on the number one streetwear podcast in the world. So if you're after streetwear news, if you're after podcasting uh, material, if you're after a bit of laughs, a bit of banter, you're in the right place. And if you're watching this via YouTube, you know what to do. Smash that like button below. Hit subscribe to come back another time. And if you're listening via the podcast app, leave me a five-star review. Not four, not three, not two, not one. A five-star review so others just like yourself who don't know about me and are a bit confused as to why this weird guy with a weird name has a show rambling on for hours and hours and hours can also take part in the show that I deliver to you. Right? That's what it's all about, isn't it? Um... So yeah, I've got a lot of topics to talk about. Loads of things I've got on my list I want to run through. So we won't waste any more time and just get into it. Um, first things first, in terms of holidays and stuff, what are you guys thinking? I know it's early in the year. I know, I know. It's only January. It's only the middle of January. But you know, you start the new year. You start thinking about, you start getting a bit, um, what's that thing called? Um, what's that word called? There's a phrase for it when you're eager to go on a trip somewhere. I forgot there's a phrase. Anyway, it doesn't matter. There's a phrase for it, but... I'm eager to go on somewhere, and I think number one goal, as per usual, is to go to Berlin, right? Berghain is my home, Grießmüller, same heads, um, a few other spots, and even Grießmüller, they're, they're threatening to close it down, so that might be a good time to kind of get out there as soon as possible. But I'm planning to go to Berlin four times this year. I want to go probably at the end of February. I'm going to go again uh, big, late April, beginning of May, so we'll be there for May Day, which is going to be amazing. Then I'm going to try and go again maybe August and then try and go again just before Christmas. So I'm going to try and do four. I think that's been my record so far. I think my record was four. I think in 2017 or 2016, I went four times, just smashed it out. But I think I did a, a big trip in at the end of January. But this time around, because I won't probably have that much money, I've got to pay bills off from the previous month. I'll probably be able to kind of go from February onward. That's my kind of perspective goal. So um, that's number one. And then apart from that, there's nothing else really planned. I want to go to somewhere maybe a bit sunny. But again, it's hard to kind of, you know, um, spec these things in during the year, especially considering the work that I do, or it's just, just in terms of DJ gigs and that sort of stuff. I don't want to take too much time away because sometimes, especially, I've always had it, whenever I've booked a big trip or like a holiday somewhere to get some sun and sea, I mean, some, some sun and some sand or some sun and sea, yeah, sun and sea, it always happens to coincide with a time where I start to get inundated with bookings. And sometimes, you know, as you guys are aware, when you're on a come up, you need to you just need to say yes to everything, right? Every booking that comes your way, you just need to accept it and just try and get on it. The moment you say no, the moment you pass an opportunity, the moment that someone else comes in and jumps in front of you, the queue, and then, you know, you're left kind of bemoaning the fact that you were on the way, on the way to kind of go in, in a certain direction and due to kind of circumstances in your control, but you're saying no, you kind of fall off the wagon. But hopefully that does happen this time around. So that's my kind of goal. Four times Berlin. I'm going to do a couple other trips as well, including... Them. No, including... Oh, of course, do the standard thing. I'm going to go Junction. Probably, I might end up going Gala too. Gala Festival looks quite interesting. I think Gerd Janssen is playing there too. So I might end up going there. But definitely doing Junction too in June, July. A few gigs in between just to kind of make myself, you know, available and all that stuff. And that's about it, I think, so going forward. But yeah, um, that's the plan for, for now. But if you've got any other travel suggestions, places you think I should be going to, I want to go to Georgia. I want to go to the Tbilisi to go and uh, visit that legendary club, Basayani, Basayani, however you pronounce it, which was at the centre of a really horrific shooting the other day. And luckily, everyone's all right and everyone's safe. But that's one of the kind of you know um, leading clubs or leading institutions that's kind of pushing against the conservative values of the Georgian um, government or some regard, right? It's probably the only safe haven for like, you know, LGBTQ and queer people 
within a, within the city of Tbilisi. So hopefully it stays around and that kind of you know shooting doesn't end up leading to them having to you know be restricted in their times of offering in times of opening all that stuff. You know how the government are in it. One one shitty occasion happens and they suddenly chance to like you know come down like a ton of bricks. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Anyway, let's get into some topics. Not much rambling today. Don't want to go too long into the intro. I just want to go straight in and start talking about stuff that I've seen on the internet, stuff that I think you guys will be interested in. So let's go through the list of stuff that I have for this show. Number one, we have the Arise Aries lookbook. How do you how do you pronounce Arise? Is it Arise or is it Aries? How do, how do you how do you think it's pronounced? I'm not too sure, but regards how it's pronounced, one of the for me one of my favorite brands in London. If anything, you know what it is. It, it it's sort of like um. A UK version of of our legacy, I'll say, in that regard, um, it's a little bit more eccentric, has a little bit more quirkiness to it, which is again relating more so towards the theme of London, right? London Fashion Week. If, one of the big best things about London Fashion Week is the fact that you just see lots of crazy shit hurled down a runway. Uh, people go a bit nuts. Of of course, some of it isn't the best. Some of it might not be the most commercially viable. But I like the fact that we're so creatively free. We're kind of untethered and we sort of like fly by the seat of our pants. And you kind of see that reflected a little bit in our streetwear. For the most part, some of our best brands are the ones that kind of take the most chances and kind of, you know, go, uh, try and push the envelope as much as they can with form factors that are a bit, you know, a bit safe, a bit dull, but they try their best to kind of push stuff a bit forward. So we've got this amazing brand I'm a big fan of called Arise, uh, Aries. I've got put here on the screen. Um, on the left, you've got Spring Summer uh, 20 lookbook. You've got uh, it with a pink and the yellow background so different lookbooks different backgrounds i'm assuming i had to look through it earlier but just going to quickly go through some of the pieces i think of of interest that i've really really liked and per usual if you're listening to the podcast app and you can't see none of this stuff i'll link it in the notes below so you'll be able to check it out yourself so yeah um again I'm, i like what they're offering they obviously stepped up the levels of stuff that they're offering in a range of their so they stepped up the amount of items they've got in their collection I remember the first or pieces. Yeah, the first few seasons, I remember there wasn't that many pieces in the collection. Overall, a lot of the stuff looked a bit cut and sew, a little bit handmade, a little bit rough around the edges. But I like the ideas. I like the patterns. I like the textures. I like the materials. I just like the the fact that some of it was super wacky. They had some great track suits um, and stuff that I was very much interested in. And I think they had a sample sale recently too. So I'm sure that sample sale was full of loads of real um, archival gems from back in the day or from um, past pieces that I'm sure a lot of people would have been a big fan of. So far, the biggest thing I've seen worn on the streets from Aries, Arise, how you ever pronounce it, from this company is um, the No, no Problemo sweatshirt, t-shirt, jumper, whatever, top, that's, that's been, I see, that's the most thing I've seen someone wear. I've seen a girl wear the, one of their fleeces before as well and that's about it, but I think that No Problemo shirt and obviously the the logo, the script logo in the in their kind of um, house font is something you've seen people wear often as well. But again, I think it's a very underrated brand, a brand that I think should be getting a lot more love, especially in London, especially considering the stuff that they make. Um, on the left, we have quite a nice little starter hat here, a nice crop jacket. We've got another shirt here. The dude's wearing it on the right hand side. Let me get the screen contrast up. Um, we've also got a nice um, jumpsuit here that's been. Just boots I'm seeing being worn everywhere. Freedom and actually bought one recently and I've seen a few more boys wearing them. Um, I know girls have, you know, long been heralding the fact that jumpsuits are, you know, the easiest way to kind of cheat on your wardrobe. And also if you're a girl and you're not that comfortable wearing stuff that's a bit more revealing or you're not really, you know, I don't know, you're you're in a hashtag fat month, right? Or fat week. A jumpsuit uh, worn the right way since that the waist can really make you look a lot more hotter than you actually feel inside in it so it's a great cheat i guess for guys doesn't really have that same level of effect unless you want to you know show your bum and make sure people know your gains that you're been achieving with your squats and your heavy deadlifts but for the most part i also think it's just a great way to kind of cheat on your outfit as a dude you put on a nice jumpsuit on you throw in a big overcoat a, a pair of vans or a pair of new balances and off you go do you know what i mean the only issue is that when you go to the toilet you literally have to strip naked right to go to the toilet you have to take off all your clothes in order to make it work um which might be a bit of an effort especially considering you know how reckless lads can be when they are urinating or doing a number two in a toilet um on the left hand side you have his boots i'm not sure if this is a new introduction to their collection whether it means they're going to make their own shoes or if it's a collaboration but i like the look of them i also like the look of the briefs or the underwear um 
So you got the script logo running across. Striped design. I quite like the look of that. I'm not sure what it's going to look like. Of course, you've got a no problem with shirt. That's something they're going to carry on. Um, of course, we've got another look at the boots here. From the front, they don't look too nice. I'm going to be honest. I think from the, they look better from the side profile. And not too sold in the red line. Uh, but again, I'm happy they're expanding their collection. I'm not too sure what this is. Is this the boxer shoes or is that just like a strap? Some script all around it. I like how it's stitched on the waist. Great little styling cube. I wonder what that is. I wonder if that's something they're going to sell. If this is like a little styling thing. Um, I like the fact that they're always going for these sort of like stonewashed jeans. That's their sort of like staple in their collections too. Which is weird, isn't it? To think about it. Like an upside brand. The thing that you know about them mostly is a t-shirt and a pair of jeans. It's not really the most... It's not really the thing that people tend to go for the first time when they first start a collection. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Acne when they started, right? They were known about... They were mostly known for their jeans. And then they sort of like, you know, if you look at our Acne's ready to wear collection now, you would never think they were known for their jeans, isn't it? Because they just do everything and everything under this, anything and everything under the sun for the most part. But I like the fact that they're always kind of putting in these stonewashed jeans. And of course, their fleeces have become super popular the last few seasons. Fairly well priced, uh, very well put together from the stuff that I've seen when I touched it in hand. Um, you've got here some nice kind of, af what do you call it? Athlete, athlete wear or underwear? We call it underwear for the most part, right? Crop top. Long sleeve with some nice briefs as well. Again, I like the script on top. Hopefully, they make these in for dudes as well. Uh, in boxer shorts, I think these look pretty cool. Uh, with the band on the top. Oh, so they got that kind of band on the top of the underwear made into like a dress sort of thing, which looks really interesting. Again, probably not for a lot of people, but I like it. The tracksuit on the right here looks incredible. It's sort of like a burgundy. It's sort of like a two-tone burgundy with purple. I'm not sure what material that is. That's light nylon or something. It's got this really nice crinkly look on it. And the uh, logo script is kind of screen printed on the right hand side. I saw that similar to football letters or vinyl lettering on the side of the pants. I love that. And of course, tie-dye socks. That look is really nice. you got a nice... And again, I like the fit of their blanks. A nice sort of like over... Is that over dyed sort of like top with a little logo on the pocket? Nice boxy fit. I'm not too sure if the necklace is going to be part of their collection either, but that looks really interesting. I like that. Um, and again, you've got this little, what's this, what would you call that? Apron sort of dress sort of thing. Um, I like this little top here too. With the combat pants look really nice. I'm not going to look, look at those combat pants. That shirt is really cool. Is it Rylon? Whatever that material is called. Those kind of like bowling shirts. But I like the jack that uh, those pants. I'm not sure if that grey New Balance is part of their collection, but the, their their previous New Balance was so good that that was very very much underrated. You remember that? I think it was a nine nine one, right? I'm pretty sure it's nine nine one. Let me see if I can quickly find it and put it up on the screen. But I'm pretty sure that was one of my fave collaborations from last year actually. Um, right, New Balance, right? I think it was a nine nine one. It came in two colors, mostly yellow. Um, both models are banging. Oh, well, yellow and white, so I spoke too soon. And there was some clothing included in it too. So here it is here on the screen. Um, yeah, a New Balance 999, 991, sorry. They're available still now, I think. You can probably get them if you look around and probably still have them. Is that true? And have them? What size do they have them in? Because I'm on a bit of a New Balance kick at the moment. Oh, really? They've got them in? No way, they've got the full size run. That's insane. What happened there? They've got a full size on these shoes. I wonder if they must have sold out beforehand. I'm not too sure. Maybe they did, didn't it? Okay, let's just. I'm gonna. I'm gonna add this into my bookmarks because you know I, I've wanted a pair of these for a while. These are really, really nice. Okay, fair enough. They've got. Okay, so they've got the yellow pair available now on um, end clothing. If you're around and if you're willing to purchase them, I wonder if they got them yet. The other colorway too. The white colorway is really nice. This one too. Yeah, they got this as well. How can they get it still available? It's interesting. Okay, this is this is not so. This is the most popular color, the white pair. Um, understandable, I guess, because it's probably the 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 pair is probably the most wearable uh, for most people. I'd I'd assume the yellow probably might be a little bit more harder to wear with your outfits and stuff. But I like the nuttiness of the actual um, yellow pair. But yeah, they're really nice. Some branding on the inside of the insole. And that's about it. It looks like right, nothing else. Maybe on a tongue. No, we don't have it on a tongue. Okay, that's about it, really. It's like a classic co collaboration. Just branding on the insult. That was what they used to do back in the day. They didn't usually give you any sort of like, you know, surface area to put your name anywhere else. Anybody who could put it was on the insult, which that no one saw. But I guess the colorway itself can, you know, pop out. At least everyone will know that this isn't some normal collaboration. But yeah, I like the look of that. I'm not sure if this is actually a collaboration itself. But yeah, again, big fan of it. 
Of course, that fleece hoodie is banging. That t shirt is that a t shirt pop, popped into some trousers? Here it is that long t shirt with that logo with the sort of like um Coliseum or whatever you'd call that? Not Coliseum, Coliseum is circle. What was that called? Um, I don't know, whatever that Roman sort of like structure is called. I like that. That's a very easy look. And again, with a hat as well, it's nice. That, that might be a little sleeper for them, you know. This sort of like, is it Houston Astros sort of like um flip on the logo? That might be a real, real, real sleeper for them. If they're able to get that just because I'd imagine, it, you know, a bulk of their income can make came from just stuff that doesn't really, you know, push the envelope too far, but then allows them to do all this sort of wacky shit. So if they're able to sell loads of these little logo t-shirts, the No Problemo shirt and the cap, you know, season in, season out, then they could, you know, go out and make these fucking crazy uh, fleece jumpers that look immensely good. They fit amazing. I love the baggy fit and everything around it. Yeah, it's just, uh, again, up there, one of my favorite brands out there. I like this little jumper as well. Wisdom and togetherness, very stoic. Um, again, this this fit here on the left goes absolutely crazy with the green fleece, with the kind of blue detailing and the jeans that look like they're tie-dye or some kind of bleached. Again, I wonder if this is a collaboration that New Balance said where Maybe it is, isn't it? The boots, again, I like them from the side profile. I'm just not finding them from the front. Maybe because they're, they're just a sample size and the girl isn't actually a size 8. I don't know how, but what do you know what I mean? Because they look a bit big. I'm not too sure. But again, one of my favorite brands out there. I recommend you check them out. Loads of cool stuff from this collection. Um, spring, summer 20. Uh, spring, or well, spring, summer, yeah. Spring, summer 2020 out there. It's going to be available soon, I'm, I'm imagining. But yeah, check them out. One of my favorite brands out there, especially from London. So support those guys if you can. Um, next on list, what else do we have to talk about here? Move on. Oh, Bergheim website was redesigned. Did I speak about that? I don't think I did mention it, did I? So Bergheim has redesigned their website, which I'm very happy with because, you know, I'm a big uh, Bergheim S-L-U-T. Um, so as you've seen here on the website, they usually every month have, they commission an artist to design the flyer um, for all the artwork for the flyer that they kind of distribute in this club that you can actually pick up some old ones previous months if i forgot where you have to go i think it might be reception no sorry i think it might be the cloak area the cloak room there might be someone there or i forgot where it was you pick up the flyers and um from previous months you can collect them i know a lot of people swap them online and stuff i've seen them do that in a burkheim group um so that's pretty cool um, so they always get someone to do a different one for, for the month and um uh, obviously uh this is something that they kind of pushed that prominently on their website now due to redesign. But another part they've kind of included, which again, we've not really seen them do too much, is they've really highlighted the shop. So I guess, you know, now it must mean that, you know, with the rising profile of the burger and the fact that it's been blown up and, you know, everyone knows it's one of the best clubs in the world and the selection process, blah, 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 blah. There's obviously a need for them in their way, in their, on their side as well, to kind of evolve with the times and try to, integrate themselves with what's going on nowadays but also not be too attached to it so the social media thing they don't really push out too much they have an instagram but it's just just to promote their nights and what they're doing um they rarely if ever post any videos on there i've for the most part i've seen them i've seen them be very um attentive on instagram because i'm always kind of i check the uh, the bird kind of location on instagram mostly every weekend to try and see if I can get any tune ideas from stuff people upload, videos and stuff, or audio videos, of because usually their camera is blocked out. But on some occasion when there's been a girl or a guy who's taken a selfie in a toilet and uploaded it onto Instagram, they're always really quick to kind of jump on there and say, hey, don't ruin the sanctity of our club. Delete that picture. People usually take them down pretty quickly. So they're, they're pretty in tune with what's going on online, but they just don't, you know, take part in it, which is great. But I'm also glad to see they're trying to, um, generate some revenues of income that can kind of so they don't have to sell out sell themselves out too much because again all this merch i've seen online on their website isn't available anywhere else apart from the Berghain store on the online shop for instance instance i'm sure and hopefully you'll be able to buy this stuff in the club which would be quite cool if you're actually because i've always wondered that why more djs don't do it especially some of the bigger ones especially some people like i don't know like an Emily Lenz, who kind of goes out of her way to kind of wear her own shirts and get people to design some merch for her when she's going on tour. It would be quite cool because, you know, again, I guess for the more sceney underground DJs, they would want to, you know, I'm sure Seth Troxler would want to shoot himself in the face before he would ever sell merch behind a DJ booth. But if you're Emily Lenz or if you're Peggy Goo, putting some t-shirts up in front of the DJ before selling them afterwards might not be that big of a deal. Because people don't expect much from you in that regard, right? It's not like you're 
you know, bastion of not selling out, right? They're quite commercially minded. So I wouldn't see a reason not to do that. So if you're a Bergheim, why wouldn't you sell these sh shirts and these jumpers and these scarves um, in person at the Bergheim themselves? You generate some more income, right? Every person buying one t-shirt, that's like nearly 50, 50 euros each person, 50 euros more someone's bringing to a club, not including the drinks they're going to buy at the bar, which are always wear well priced. But I like the redesign of the store of the website. I think the program is a lot easier to kind of browse. Again, the shop is really cool. You've got releases that they're also punting on there. But again, I think the clothing will be a really cool way to kind of, and again, maybe the compilations too will be a great way to them to kind of, again, push it forward and have a way to kind of, you know, capitalize on the name of Burger without selling it out too much. Um, this shirt here with this sort of like stony feature, which I'm sure is actually the surface of Bergheim itself, phot photographed and then printed DGP wise onto a t-shirt looks absolutely sick. I think it's probably my favorite bit of it. And it's got this sort of like raised uh, screen printing on the front, which looks really great. So really great quality. It looks like, again, from the pictures I'm just seeing on my screen, you got this amazing little jock strap here, which I'm sure will be popular as well. Uh, this is from Lab, the little... Uh, the underground sort of like club to the right of Bergheim, I think, on the entrance, right? It's a little underground one that is mostly um, geared towards the gay crowd, I'm pretty sure. They don't have any straight nights on there or mixed nights. For the most part, you have to wear fetish wear as well to get into lab, I'm pretty sure, lab laboratory. I've seen a couple of people, so I've seen a couple of the staff members wearing the t-shirts as well when they're in and around the Bergheim, which is quite cool. You've got this again, this little um, turquoise and pink, a t-shirt too that's really nice with a burger logo in the middle again that logo right in the middle like that on the on the on a great hoodie a black hoodie for the for instance would look so great i'd be all over it hopefully they make more of those going forward they've got a jumper this that looks really nice i like the jumper itself is cool but i would also like to see that jumper put into a hoodie that would look amazing the scarf is really nice as well actually i like the scarf the scarf i think someone, someone mentioned it in our comments that they purchased one recently the scarf is great isn't it I like the scarf as well. Very football esque with the sort of like Burkine logo around and then sort of the sorry, the Burkine script going around the scarf and also the logo on each end of the scarf and it has the inverse colours on each side. And then one of my favourite bits as well, one an undercover piece I think you need to check out is this laboratory running uh top and bottom as well, which I'm not sure why they have these things, but again, I'm all for it, I'm all game. So again, check it out. Um Burkine has redesigned their website. Um, it looks great. I love how they put all their releases out on there. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be a great way for them to generate some extra income for one of the best clubs in the world. They definitely deserve it. Um, looking at the program, again, all the months are listed. I think they put up the listings for, I think February's up. March isn't up, is it? Nope. Got a couple stuff here for March. But February's up. I think this is the February that I want to go to, isn't it? The, sorry, the, the month that I want to go, I think, is February. I'm looking to go towards the end of the month, so <laughs> sorry about that. So it will line in with payday and stuff. Um, looking down on list of on list of stuff. Obviously, they got the club night. The so the one that I'd probably want to go to is probably the Friday, the twenty eighth of February. Finest whiteys. They've got Jade Seattle back back with Jane Fitz, of course, the UK legend, someone that you probably have seen. At the world unknown, uh, world unknown parties in London, if you've been around, Leonard Wilkins, who's obviously someone that I rate very highly, minus science and Tasker. I like, I like those Fridays when it's only the panorama bar open. Actually, I quite like them. It's quite fun. I think that was the time when I saw Motor City Drum Ensemble playing. It's quite a cool time to go there. Of course, it's the most busiest time to go. It's when all the tourists come for the most part. All the OGs usually tend to go to Sunday, but still, I think it's a great occasion to go because I think for the most part, people definitely go to Bergheim for Bergheim to hear the really hard techno in the main room, but I quite like the Panorama Bar vibe. I think it's quite relaxed. It's quite chill and usually get some really fun people on there. And of course, on the Saturday, the main night, the club night, um, they've got on Bergheim, they've got Tin Man Live, Answer Code Request, Boris, Devious One. Uh, or, or devious one, uh, Dr. Rubenstein, again, one of my favorites, Marcel Dietman, Nazir and Neil, and Panama Bar, they've got Portable Live, they've got Crombie, David Alkerman, Eris Jew, Eris Jew and Okta Okta back to back is going to be so good. Uh, Paramise, Sean Wright, Soundstream, and Tamo Soma. That's going to be an absolutely nutty one. So, again, once I get everything sorted out, I'm definitely going to go to that night. I think that's, that, that's definitely my 
and Emma when I go to Bergheim next. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. So yeah, check it out. Bergheim site has been redesigned. It looks absolutely banging. All right, next on the list here, what do we have? Let's run through here. Uh, we have Bergheim outfits. I mentioned that before. I don't think I did mention that, did I? So I, I want to go. I mentioned it before. I am going very, very soon. I don't know why I'm logged out to all these websites at the moment. But so I've got here... Um, my list of stuff that I want to kind of wear when I go to the Bergheim, some um, Bergheim outfit inspiration. Um, it's difficult, right? Because I think when you go to the Bergheim, for the most part, you're aware of the scene, you're aware of, the in you're, aware of where you're going, and you kind of want to make a bit of an effort, right? Because it's, you know, one of the prominent clubs out there. You want to be a bit of a club kid. You want to indoctrinate yourself. You want to get involved. You want to be part of the scene. You don't want to stand out too much, and you want to be part of the ambiance, right? So you want to plan a bit of an outfit. And usually when I go, I'm usually Rick head to toe. Maybe with a band t-shirt on for, you know, just for parity's sake. But um, the last time I went, I had a pair of Dr. Martin, some Rick Owen shorts, and a vest sort of top, right? And I was I was in good spirits. I was nice. I was feeling good. I was feeling happy. So this time around, I want to maybe change stuff around, but not too much. Because you don't want to get denied when you get at the front of the flipping door, right? You don't want them to think, oh, no, this guy's a fucking square. You want them to think of you as somebody that should be in that place dancing and grooving. I would say maybe Saturday at a club nuts could be a, an occasion where you can get at a club night, a club night, however you pronounce it is a time that you could probably get away with wearing a bit more Haida Aikerman, right? A little bit more flamboyant, some Jill Sander, some Isimiyake. But then Saturday, for the most part, especially the main main room, you definitely need to be, you know, Yoji Yamamoto, Rick Owens, Goff Kid, you know, um, and all that kind of vibe. I would say for the most part. So here's some after inspiration for those of you that give a shit. Um, just some stuff that I've been kind of thinking about, stuff that I think would kind of work. Uh, in terms of stuff that I kind of want to do when I go to Bergheim at the end of February. That is a plan. Anyway. I'm just going to book it as well. As soon as I get paid, I'm just going to book that stuff straight away and get out of the way um, in general. But this is what I'm kind of going for, right? This is kind of my idea. I've kind of put it up on your screen. So the first image, I think, I forgot what, what, what brand these things are for. But again, um, this first look is sort of like, I don't know, um, really tiny jean shorts, right? Uh, again, when I get my squat up, and I've got my one rep max up to where I need to want to get to. My fire's going to be throbbing out of those jean shorts. I'm going to look like an absolute foot. And then, of course, some white socks and some athletic trainers. That's kind of one sort of look you see get paraded around Bergheim quite often. Maybe I might be seeing him sending mixed signals out there. But you know what? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> um, then we've got, obviously, the classic sort of, like, Dark Lord look that I would also be game for wearing. This is from Comme des Garçons. I'm pretty sure Spring Summer 19 collection or Fall Winter 19. The collection that included the Jordan 1 collaboration that they did with the whole bondage all over it. I like it because, again, I think it's a look that you could easily replicate with some vintage pieces, stuff that you probably get from like a charity shop, or whatever. You've got this sort of like long lace dress with these stocking sock things, right? Knit. And of course, the Jordan 1s. Um, again, it looked like it can easily be replicated. And I love the makeup. I love the fact that it's all bleached blonde, no facial hair. You've got this massive earring with the cross on it. And this sort of like black mascara kind of uh, on the eyebrows around the eyes too and black lipstick looks really cool. I think that'd be something that I'd be game for wearing, to be honest. Then, of course, you've got the classic Rick Owens look that I'm sure you've seen play with Carti, you know, and Gunner absolutely kill um, the last couple of months or whatever they've been wearing this stuff head to toe. But I like the look of it. I like the fact that it's kind of like, an, you know, a, a disformed bomber jacket in some regards. You've got this sort of like biker denim look and then you've got these massive rig going platform high heel things that you know not a lot of people would wear but something that i'd be down to kind of again maybe not the best thing to wear on a berlin club uh, dance floor on a Bergen dance floor but again a look that i think would kind of you know ingratiate you a little bit more with the scenery around and then lastly that collection you've got this look from vetema spring summer 19 i'm pretty sure right the one they did when they were in mcdonald's um again i like the look of it i like the approach i like the face paint Maybe I've included two bits of face paint in this collection just because I think it's a bit more fun, man. Again, I'm not sure how they would respond to it when you get to the front, but I'm sure I've seen some far more wackier outfits when I've been on the Bergheim dance floor than, than this. And again, I think it again would be something fun, something interesting, something to kind of get myself out of my usual comfort zone that I'm usually in when I'm back in London. And then lastly, we've got some other pieces and pieces. We should probably lend itself more to a panorama bar feel. I think I can get away with this at panorama bar probably a little bit more than I could maybe at Bergheim. 
So you've got this great um, top and bottom. I'm not sure who the brand was again. This might be Jill Sander. This might be... I forgot who this is, actually. I should have put the names on it, but I like the look of it. It's like a black and it's like a black uh, black tracksuit or top. To get, it's not, I'm pretty sure it's not, pretty sure it's not a jumpsuit. Pretty sure it's a pair of trousers and a knit uh, turtleneck with these little weird kind of like um, neon green horizontal lines going across it, which look really cool. And again, the addition of the Chelsea boots at the bottom really kind of finish the look off really well. And then next year you've got John Oliver. I think John Sullivan, whatever how you pronounce it, John Oliver Sullivan. John Oliver Sullivan, right? I'm pretty sure, right? Who does really cool collections of rule. Um, the Japanese designer who designs for them is amazing. Um, I like this look as well because I think something you can replicate pretty easily for cheap if you wanted to do so. You've got here a denim jacket, uh, some leather pants, and essentially some biker boots, which you could obviously get a pair. And again, the color at the bottom is kind of peaked out a bit of a purple turtleneck with some hair dye and some, you know, some pale makeup and some highlights there. And then next you've got here, what's this again? I should have put the name down, didn't I? I forgot who this is by, but I like the look in general. I like these kind of like Mark Jacob X boots, these kind of Damir mountain climber boots with the mountain climber tights with a leather blazer. And then the sort of like weird, um, sort of like halter top thing at the top with the hair and makeup again, looks great. And then lastly, we've got here a collection from... I'm going to say the kid that used to walk uh, for a cold war. I'm pretty sure he designed this. I'm like the look of it in general. I think it looks cool. I wish bucket hats would look this cool on me, but they don't. And you've got his bucket hat. You've got this sort of like uh, patchwork vest top that's cropped. A long elongated t-shirt, black leather trousers, and some you know, some running shoes. So those are the sort of looks I'm kind of going for for the whole Berlin Burger and trip. Again, not too sure what I end up, what might be the one to go with. But I like the approach on all of them, and I think we'll work pretty well on that Berlin on that Berlin dance floor. Because like, I think in London, for the most part, I don't really try hard enough when I go out. I used to do that often, especially when we used to meet up with my friends. You know, we used to always kind of you know try and out out outfit each other. But I don't know what happens. I think the more you start getting to the music, the more you start to DJ and stuff. I start, I tend to like leave my outfit choices or my crazy ensembles for when I actually play somewhere. Um, when I'm going out, I just want to be comfortable. I just want to have fun. I want to, you know, listen to the music, hear the set and stuff. I don't want to worry about my outfit beforehand. But I think I might change this going forward because that's part of the fun when you're out in the club. When you're out, when you're out in the club for the most part, right? You want to be a bit of a club kid, get dressed up, make a bit of an effort, show out, take some pictures and stuff, and just be a bit fun in it. Be a bit, bit loose, a little bit entertaining, a little bit interesting. I think so anyway. But you know, what do I know? Next on list here, what do we have? Oh, we have Kobulsi. Kobulsi. How do you pronounce his name? Kobulsi. Kobosil speaking very highly again of Berghain, um, talking about how much he loves his crew. I'm not sure why I've got this on the list here, but I thought I'd read it anyway because I think it's interesting and it's something that you guys might be interested in too. So this is what I usually do for the most part when I'm, you know, at the weekend because I like to just browse and find out what's happening at Berghain. So usually I'll usually click the location post of a recent post of someone that's been at Berghain Panorama Bar. And on Instagram, especially the desktop app, you get the app, you get the option to kind of just scroll through all the recent images, right? You got this great picture of um, <laughs> Marcel Dietman wearing a slightly tight shirt that he must have got, I think, when he first was playing it at the Bergheim, White Oster got at the back, saying back to zero. The shirt's slightly small, but that's quite funny. But again, you get people uploading all the images, usually standing outside of the Bergheim, having been rejected, or just generally talking about how great of a time they had when they were at this space, right? So those are cool images you can go through. And if you're lucky, you can find a story of somebody that went to the Bergheim. Um, this is not a good time to do it, but you sometimes you might upload images or videos this week, that one, of them at the actual club, showing what actually happened, and you hear some music in the background. Blah, blah blah right that's usually the vibe that i kind of go for so let's go back to the post um from Kobo still talking about his crew so this is something that i've already read but i want to quickly check it out with you guys so this is the following um this is uh Kobosi took a picture which is interesting i think he was the person that was accused of or the rumors around the internet forums or the techno forums is that supposedly Kobosi was the guy that was banned for a short period of time of being a resident at the burger, which is great, right? He had a temporary ban. I, w I wasn't sure that was a thing. Um, Cause I think if you're a DJ and you get the chance to be a resident DJ at the fucking Bergheim, right? Or the Panorama Bar, you're gonna do everything in your power not to fuck that up, right? Because I'm sure much like the comedy store in Los Angeles, it, it's a good way for you to kind of get your name out there and become a bigger 
draw or brand name for others, right? I'm assuming so. Maybe. I don't know how it works out. I don't know if whether or not actually playing there actually gives you more bookings or if it's more so a thing of just personal pride because we're all big techno fans, we're all big dance music fans, electronic music fans. So once you get booked somewhere like that, it's more so of a personal victory for yourself. Maybe it's not such a big deal for festival because of an event book. I'm not sure. I don't know what the deal is, but um, it's a big deal. And he got banned, right? Because he was acting a bit of a lad and he did some things he probably wasn't meant to be doing behind a DJ booth. And um, it seems like he's been reinvited. He's been kind of welcomed back into the fold, which is great to see. I think for the most part, it goes to show that maybe as an institution, he's not the first and won't be the last of a DJ to kind of act out on the dance floor and get a bit too crazy. So they probably have these measures in place already where they are able to kind of, you know, look at the crime uh, and then deem a punch, a deem a pun and then kind of enact a punishment that is in relation to the crime, but then also have a path back to redemption for the person to come back into the scene. Because I'd imagine with a dance music scene, technical scene, much like what I've been reading in the horrifying book um catch and kill by Ronan Fouts, you know talking about the whole me too movement that spurt that kind of come off the back of the harvey weinstein allegations um i would imagine much like the hollywood scene dance music scene is pretty small right i'd imagine if you kind of get a reputation of being a bit of a douche or you know being a, a problem to deal with for clubs they'll probably just stop booking you i'd imagine so happens a lot in hollywood right which is why a lot of those women were af afraid of coming out and saying anything because their reputations were going to be damaged and they didn't want someone to smear them and say they're difficult to work with, which happened to Rose McGowan, basically, isn't it? Essentially what killed her career um, in mainstream kind of Hollywood um, scenes. So, uh, but it's cool that they've got a, a plan in place to kind of redeem, a path back to redemption, I would say. That's pretty interesting to see, isn't it? One of the biggest clubs in the world is able to forgive and forget one of their prominent DJs and residents who should know better and welcome back into the fall. It's a lesson that probably, it's a lesson that maybe more on the scene should probably heed and sure take notice of i would imagine so especially concerning some other situations that have happened to other djs in the past or might happen to other DJs going forward especially considering the fact that you know we all adults will have to understand that people who, that go to nightclubs or go to these dark places you know are not the most uh, uh straight laced people in the world let's say for for lack of a better term so to have some so to have something in place to that takes that into consideration and also is able to say hey I know you messed up. I know you did bad, but we're a path of redemption here, but don't mess up again because if you mess up again, you're completely out of the picture. And I think most of the time, I know for me personally, when I've been called out for being a douche or for, you know, acting out when I went out and being too drunk or, you know, just being a lad and you get called out by your friends, usually, you know, you only need one warning if you're a decent person. You don't need to be told several times. I'd imagine even more so for a DJ. So it's quite great to see this anyway. Um, but anyway, let's move on to his actual statement regarding the whole club night that he had. I'm pretty sure loads of DJs do this after I think, you know, Ber Bergen has that magical effect for professionals who play every week around the world and get paid thousands of pounds. They still go to this little, or not little, this, you know, this massive concrete cube in the middle of Kreuzberg and they still flipping, you know, write essays about their experience afterwards. It's an amazing effect of the club. Um, he says the following, Kobosil, Kobosil, how do you pronounce it? Kobosil or Kobosil? Kobosil says the following on Instagram incredible scenes on Thursday night uh, the picture was made just before opening the doors I can't say enough that I'm very proud to have you all behind my back many people were asking last night why I opened like that I had and will have time slots in the future where I can show full force but last night I wanted the new artists on my label to breathe they need their stage and chance uh, what I already got. Beautiful performance from his artist, one person here called Roseanne Straw something, followed by my brother Parallax and an insane Rifka R23 live set. Please imagine how he f how he feel today. Coming from nothing and end up to play at such a lovely and open crowd last night, not to forget Power Girl, Clara Carve and her banging ending. Honestly, thank you for changing our life and true loyalty and love music, which is awesome, right? I guess he had the opportunity I guess it must have been a label night or label promotion or something along those kind of lines. And instead of, you know, hogging the limelight. And again, this is Thursday night just before Bergheim actually opens. So the fact that he's able to kind of give his artists time to breathe, right? Give the opportunity to actually play at the opening set when everyone's kind of pouring through the doors is amazing. It was really cool to see. And something that isn't, um, you know, something that shouldn't go without saying, actually. Um, 
I think it must be quite tempting when you're a bigger DJ to just take up all the limelight, especially at a place like that. You wouldn't be you wouldn't be remiss for doing that. But to give your artists the time to breathe and to do their own thing, I guess they they were they must have been really really over the moon about the whole situation. I'm pretty sure that was part of it. So again, big up Kabosi for allowing his artists to breathe. I wish we had more people doing that. And again, I think. Just in general, the fact that they have residents at Burger and the fact that one of the biggest clubs in the world has resident DJs and some other clubs in London, for the most part, don't have any resident DJs or don't actually push them that well, it goes to show just how far behind other places are. And again, maybe it's just the fact that, you know, I think for the, for the fact we don't have residents in London, but we do have a very thriving club scene. You can go to, I think that's one part, that's one bit of London that can't be contested. The fact that any given night you can go out and you can, hit up a club night whether it's reggae dub break uh, breakbeat uh jungle dubstep house techno disco tech house business techno lounge house wherever you could wherever you want you can find it you can find it in london for the most part if you go to berlin it's just the same stuff right it's mostly techno and house maybe a sprinkle of disco here and there there are some hip-hop and urban quote-unquote clubs that are popping up or club nights are popping up especially in Kreuzberg I know there's one in Neuklund as well in some like um, sports hall arena thingy that they have but for the most part it's mostly mostly techno and house in it so that's probably one of the things that kind of sell that kind of pushes uh, London over some of the other places but again um, I think what you're seeing from some of these bigger artists you know the fact that they are able to write these essays about Esplanade probably shows that they're probably leading the way in general the things that they're doing I would say anyway, right? Probably. What would you say? Yeah, I'm sure you guys agree. Moving on, moving on, moving on up. So, um, Tom Sachs, one of my favorite um, artists out there, has this a interesting documentary that's, that's I think available now on his web store. It's called um, How to How to Surf. I'm pretty sure it's called How to Surf or Learning How to Surf. I've got the trailer here. I'm gonna pr- quickly pop up onto the screen for you guys to read and check out. But I think there's a really cool lesson to be kind of gleaned from this, or one of the cool little steps I think we might actually see itself applied in other fields. Let's quickly check out the trailer. I think the trailer is up on Vimeo. Um, but I think the whole movie is available to buy or to purchase or to view on his actual web store. So let's quickly check it out here regardless. So this is the movie or the trailer for it. It's, it's titled How to Learn How to Learn How to Surf, which is an interesting title, right? It's not called How to Surf or How to Learn How to Surf. It's called How to Learn How to Surf, right? A Tom Sykes fair movie, which I said the thing twice, but who cares? Let's play it anyway, and I'll quickly tell you what I think lessons can be gleaned from this. This is a movie about bad surfers on the long, painful road to becoming okay surfers. We range in ability from first-time greenhorns to 20-plus year veterans. We are, all of us, bad. We, all of us, have bad attitudes. Well, all of us but Sarah. Each of us has come with a goal, a surfing goal. I just want to learn to enjoy it. Jump onto another surfer's board. Ride the blue wave. Look cool in a picture. So, I think that was pretty cool, right? So, pretty cool idea, pretty cool movie. And again, goes to show just how creative and inspirational someone like a Tom Sachs is, right? But the most cool thing I thought, or the coolest thing I thought about the whole thing was this post. Or a screen grab from the documentary, I think, of the um, how to learn how to surf bullet points, right? The kind of uh, the 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 ten step process in, in order to kind of learn how to do most things. I think apart from surfing, take surfing out of the equation, just just apply this to anything you want to do in life. And I thought it was a pretty cool ideology and a pretty good cool methodology towards learning things. And again, goes to speak to just how creative and out the box and how. Tom Sykes kind of breaks things down into this, you know, into the easiest step possible for you to kind of understand. So here's a list of stuff I'm going to read out, right? It's available now on the screen for you to check out. But again, I'll put a link to the show if you guys to see yourself, you want to check it out. So um, these are 10 bullet, 10 steps, 10, 10 commandments, let's say, to uh, understand how to learn, how to learn how to surf or how to do anything. Number one, sacred space. Number two, learn the code. Number three, he understands. Number four, compare and despair. Number five, get in the boat. Number six, which has been highlighted out, be afraid, be sort of afraid. 
Uh, number seven, uh, APB. I'm not sure what that means. Number eight is fail with joy. Number nine is get hurt. Number 10, persistence. And I think the first um, two obviously are um, self-explanatory. The fact that you should have a sacred space where you go to practice something, where you go to learn how to do a certain thing. Um, writing, DJing, uh, learning how to graph. I remember when I was trying to do my throw up on my hand style and trying to get that down pat. It was just a process of just doing it again and again and again and again, but mostly doing it, mostly having a time and a period away from wherever I do, having a space somewhere in my house. So I can just sit down with a big pad of paper and just sketch over and over again my tag. Just keep, keep writing it, keep writing it, keep writing it. I hope that over time I'll be able to kind of, you know, get better. Um, and now obviously number four, number three, three understand what to show that one. Um, number four, compare and despair. I love that idea. The idea that, the best way to learn usually is the idea that you know is what's that austin klein book good art is still great artists copy no great good art is still great artists copy. i don't know whatever way around that title that that of that movie is or that book is sorry it's very true and best way to do it is to compare and obviously part of the reason part of the things that i've really enjoyed especially the last few years of me kind of really ramping up going out a lot especially when i've been djing i think sometimes you can get a little bit jaded a little bit um, cynical when you start playing out places and you can think you can start to get a bit of a bit, a bit not big big ego because sometimes overestimate how good you are especially when you're especially when there's some there's such a prevalence of club nights in london especially some of the more you know shittier ones that you can sort of think how the hell do these guys get to play in this place right but most of the time if you've got the money you can play anywhere right you can just put a night on and play for yourself and hopefully hope that some strangers can come along and tie you over and make sure you break even. So that's not to, you know, whatever. But I also like the fact that I'm able to go out. I think I learned this from Joey Diaz on his podcast, The Church of What's Happening Right Now. I remember him saying, you have to learn how to enjoy art and love things. So watching movies, um, going to the theater, reading a great book, right? That will really um, kind of, especially from the top, top, top performers in any of their fields, that will really kind of open your mind up to creativity and also allow you to be a bit more humble and understand where you've kind of fall on the totem pole of creativity. So one of the best things about going to these big club nights, going to these big festivals like Junction 2 and stuff, you get to see the creme de la creme and it really puts in perspective just how far away you are, but also just how far you've come in your journey. And it's, and I would compare and I would kind of um, use the methodology of compare and despair. So I'm comparing myself to Dixon and I'm also despairing of just how far ahead he is in terms of DJing technically and it's also in terms of just taste level because of the years and years he spent listening to music, crafting stuff, editing stuff, making remixes, signing people, listening to demos, playing in places, overhearing stuff, under here, wherever it may be. He's just got years of experience so you can compare but despair and then um, of course, number five, get in the boat, which might mean just like, you know, go out there and do the work. I would assume, I haven't watched a movie, I'm just interpreting what I'm, I think of this. APB, I'm not too sure what this is, maybe always be practicing. Um, number eight is fail with joy, which I love the idea that, you know, you're just crap at this thing, you're starting, you don't have any idea what you're doing, and it doesn't matter really. I remember that's the same thing I used to, that's what really kind of pushed me over the edge when I started skateboarding at like an older age um because i skateboard a lot when i was younger but then if, if you know anything about skateboarding uh, when i first skate i think i must have been like 13 or 12 or something and i did that up until i was 15 but then stopped until i was about 21 and got back on a skateboard which might as well i might as well not skateboarded before right the fact that I, I jumped back on again when i was like over the age of 21 it was so difficult to do of course when you're older you're a lot more fearful you don't want to jump you don't want to throw yourself down a pair of stairs anymore or set of stairs sorry so it's a harder learning, it's a, it's a far harder learning curve. Um, it takes a while to learn how to jump off things to get fearless again. But the moment I started to kind of laugh at myself, not take myself too seriously and started to understand that, yeah, I know, I know I might, I know I might think I look good on a skateboard, but most of the time people can tell straight away just from the way you push that you're not good or you haven't been practicing for long or you haven't been doing it for a, a while. So there isn't any point in trying to pretend or trying to, you know, act like you're okay when you're not so the moment i started to like accept that i'm gonna fall a lot and i'm gonna you know bust my ass for lack of a better term the moment i started to improve and i started to drop i started to fall i started to slip skip stack it with absolute joy in my heart and i absolutely loved it um get hurt of course number nine and number 10 persistence which is really the name of the game isn't it right which is probably why i named my record label persistence records isn't it checking them out on soundcloud but um 
it's probably the name of the game. Definitely the name of the game. Persistence is the name of the game. I think I've seen for myself, especially being in the scene that I'm in, especially with the streetwear scene in general, especially the London kind of like streetwear, socialite community hanging out scene. Everyone, anyone that kind of just hanged around long enough and just didn't leave and just kept going to, you know, gallery openings and store openings and activations and, you know, just putting their face around and going to the right party. They're still around now. Some of them have been lucky enough to be hired by some of the biggest brands on the scene, right? Which has been great. Of course, I wasn't willing to do that and it wasn't something I wanted to do. I chose a different route. But everyone that just hung around long enough and persisted and just, you know, hung in there by the skin of their teeth or just was clawing away was inevitably left with an option to kind of, you know, get welcomed in, right? Someone opened the door and cracked the door open for them and it just slipped in there. So that's a big part of the game, really. It's not, I think, talent and all that stuff is... You know, it can sometimes be a bit over uh, emphasized. I think the ability to kind of just do the work and show up day after day is probably more important than anything else. I would say in that regard, personally, I would I would put that up there with the with the top of it. But again, this is a Tom Sachs movie. It's available, I think, now in the website. It's called How to Learn How to Surf. And again, I think this will work. This methodology will work for most people in most of the things they do in their life, I would say so. Um, I think it's available now on his section of your website, right? On the movie section. Yeah, I'm on it now. So it's on here now, the movie section of your site. Is it, do you purchase it or is it something that you just can watch for free? Oh, you can watch it. Okay, that's awesome. So it's available now to check out. Check out on his website now. I've got it here on the screen. All these other movies are checked on there too. It pertains to FIFA Joe, which is great. You've got all these, other, all these other movies. Again, one of my favorite um, contemporary eyes out there in the scene there's a reason why loads of other of your most there's a reason why most of the people you look up to in the scene look up to him as well um don't sleep tom Sachs is a g he is the guy um great stuff overall definitely check it out if you're that way inclined great stuff on there let's move on puppy 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 stefano pilati is back I'm not sure if you guys are a fan of this, but this is one of my favorite collections out there. It's called Ride and My Identities. It's by the famed YSO designer and somebody who I think a lot of people in the scene, a lot of people in the industry, a lot of people who like fashion will be familiar with. I'm sure if you're maybe outside of fashion, you probably don't give a F about him, but he's a really influential designer. Somebody who kind of uh, made his mark on YSO before um, um, Hedy got there, did a really good job and then kind of disappeared, took a backseat from fashion, but didn't now suddenly has launched this basics line called um, Random Identity, which is available on on Essence um, for the most part. And I think they, were, they did a show, they kind of presented their first collection through Essence as well. They did a show where they kind of had the models walking through the office space that's in Vancouver, I'm sure, in, in Canada. Um, so check that out as well. I'm pretty sure Essence is going to open up in London. Someone told me this. I'm not sure if it's true, it's a rumor out there, but someone said Essence is going to open up a HQ in London. Um, I'm not sure if that's a rumor, but yeah. Um, one of my favorite brands out there from Stefano Pilati, um, Random Identities. I'm going to quickly get it up on here for you guys to see. And I like the fact that um, for somebody, it's quite it's quite an honor really for consumers like myself to have a designer of his level um, purposely putting out clothes. He purposely decided to do a collection that was essentially just a basis collection, right? Um, there isn't, like he could have easily gone out and just been, you know, designing for another you know, brand or another luxury brand, which he probably is, might be doing in the shadows. But the fact that he, he went and decided to do a brand like Random Identities and put that out there instead is something that I would, you know, you've got much respect for the guy for doing so. Um, this is now, I'll show you now on the screen, but there's another collection I want to kind of run you through. But Random Identities is here. It's available on Essence, which is the main place I really check out for more my fashion stuff. It says the following, a little bio on it. Uh, first revealed in 2017, veteran designer Stefano Pilati's newest project is Random Identities, a collection of ready-to-wear primed for our digitized era, channeling the lessons of the dizzyingly comprehensive career across top fashion houses, among them Miu Miu, Yves Saint Laurent, and Zegna. I think that Zegna was his last job. Pilati brings a unique expertise in design, tailoring, and silhouettes to bear his contemporary work. The label's menswear orientated garments inhibit a strain of head turning provocation, provocation, sorry, which I really like. It's very queer, it's very um, effeminate. Um, but again, I like the fact that it's unisex or it's genderless. I like that. Um, most, I think most people could wear the stuff in the collection, but it also has that bit of risque, a little bit of spice on it, which again, which I think would lend itself quite well to my Bergheim outfit choice that I mentioned at the top of the show. Um, again, 
probably not for everybody. It probably won't suit a lot of people's styles. But I think if you're that way inclined, you want to get a bit freaky with your clothing, you don't mind taking a few risks. Definitely your way to go. Um, so it can continue to hear the bio. Head turning provocation that is nonetheless uh, definitely controlled by monochromatic color choices and stark detail, which is again a really good point. The fact that you know if you would have put this stuff in a few more Atlantis colors, it probably would have been harder to sell. Um, inspired by his dress style of Pilates Berlin friends, which is awesome because he's actually based there. The label's top trousers and outwear strike a look that balances refined, rigid cuts with everyday wearability. The online label is positioned for mass exposure. Pilates ready to wear industry collections have been partly. Da -da -da. Anyway, again, I'm a big fan of it. I love everything in the collection. Again, so I've told you, very feminine looks, some nice, just sense, just kind of effeminate kind of styles, stuff that you could like this shirt here, I'm pretty sure. A more confident guy would wear that without any bottoms and just pants underneath. A nice jumpsuit, some suiting wear. I like the shorts, that kind of. I like the length of the shorts. It falls just, you know, I say five millimeters above from the knee. The idea that this sort of like bra top reminds me of stuff that you would have seen from Margiela with a sort of like uh, bra. Was it, was it the the nipple top? Remember with the kind of cracked eggs on it? Was it nipple top? Was that was that was that Margiela? It was, not it? Yeah, Margiela had a bra top. It might have been Sarah Lucas. What is, remember Sarah Lucas had a t-shirt that had like these um, fried eggs over where her boobies would have been, right? But again, I like the look of it. Very nice materials. Again, you got this sheer sort of like bomber jacket, which would look great. Like one for one on sale now. On Essence, like really great stuff. These boxy lounging shorts, which look amazing as well. You got, of course, these sort of shorts like that, which would look great. That that Berkheim would just go, go off. Of course, the sort of like sleeveless jumpsuit or so hoodies will look really awesome. And one of my favorite pieces from the collection are these boots that he does, right? So these sort of like Chelsea boots that they're called worker boots, but he essentially just elongated the heel, reinforced the front of it. So obviously give that kind of work boot style. Um, again, something that can be worn unisex. And my favorite of the boots is this boot here, which I think available now still. Is this black suede boot. It's called... The, what is it? The Black Suede B03 boot, right? It's available in my size. I'm pretty sure it would be. Yeah, I'm pretty sure no one's bought it so far. But I love the fact that it's essentially just a high heel boot with this sort of like wedge sole. And you've got the look. I think most boots are like this. Women's boots where the heel doesn't look that high. But because they've sort of made it a bit... Before, before they, because they made the little indentation on the inside a little bit smaller, it's easy to walk in. I think if you had... If the base of the heel was smaller... It would make it harder, but the fact that it's a it's an actual thick heel and it kind of you know there's not much gap in between where your arch of your foot would be, it makes them really comfortable to wear. I'd imagine so. Um, they look amazing. Um, I would 100% wear a pair. And again, square toe box. Again, um, I think the models on the actual in this collection wear them with a bit more with, the, with kind of like a bigger trouser, like similar to this, or maybe something like this, at like this 60s jean that kind of exposes the boot a little bit more. I think they look fucking banging personally. A really really cool boot again you can see the look how they kind of you know he blends that kind of um feminine sort of look with stuff that he does anyway i say all this to say he's back again new collections out now uh that showed i think during i'm going to say was it milan i don't know when he showed but he showed recently um it looks amazing i'm a big fan of it i think everything in the collection looks great especially the boots especially some of the styling pieces I think, again, would lend themselves really well to my outfit choices for Berlin when I end up going there at the Bergheim soon enough. I mentioned that probably a million times already, but it's my podcast. Do I want? So, um, we've, got an, we've got like an upgrade on the sort of like brow top we've seen him uh, present. You've got this amazing sort of like chain link crystal uh, mesh thing that could go over a t-shirt, over a shirt, mesh shirt detail. Again, the lighting's not the best. I know it's a bit of a darker picture, but bear with me. I love the colors. I love the fact that you've got this belt that cinched on the end, that cinches the waist of the suiting you've got this great red sort of like pop on the suiting top and bottom and again i think it might be a collection that i end up wearing quite often especially some of the suits especially some of the trousers i like the look of it i think they look really cool with stuff that i want to wear this season i love the the effect of the pants with the sheer top again a nice scarf cravat a nice scarf or cravat sort of style with the chain link that connects the blazer and again some really cool pieces i love that belt that he does sort of like d-ring belt that he kind of puts out there and again um i think the chain is back again as well the sort of like 
massive dog collar chain that you would see someone wear on a techno dance floor he's made the wedges into his massive longer boots that would look really great on men and women and again that chain link or connection comes in a ring as well now probably earrings as well i'm assuming would happen soon too nice chunky earrings and again just great styling this is one of my favorite looks which is look 10 uh you've got this black bu bucket hat amazing camel coat um with the little side pouch on the inside of the boots of course worn there again just great style overall pinstripe suit which is you know quintessential stefano Plati style very boxy very big uh cut really well and again just great overall now the boots come in a sort of like leopard color colorway as well leopard ring color which is great you've got the chain here again which i'm a big fan of yeah, just really interesting. Oh, yeah, see, the ring does come in. Oh, no, it's not earrings. It's a different type of style. But, again, the boots come in a men's size and two, I'm assuming. And, again, got this camo top. Just one of the great collections out there, I think. Again, does great work. Stefano Pilati, we're lucky to have him making such basic pieces, I guess, for the most part, because he's super talented. He could be designing for any luxury brand out there. Name them. He could be doing it. But, instead, he's making this amazing cross between streetwear and just, I don't know, contemporary wear whatever you'd call this stuff like this trench here with the white piping on it Oof. very very contrast stitching is it contrast stitching isn't it more so than white piping isn't it yeah i say contrast stitching it's really really great stuff overall like great stuff tracksuit bottoms you've got nice pants here you've got this amazing sort of kill is it a kill or is this a trouser i'm not too sure um the trainer collaboration which is, I, I forgot who the brand was he collaborated with the trains but again nice great stuff here that work jacket is really great and again it, most of the stuff is available on sale now in essence really great collection something that i would be down to wear in an absolute heartbeat um stefano pilati random identities uh new collection for winter right is it for winter 21 i'm pretty sure right maybe for winter 20 i'm not too sure but yeah i love that mesh oh that one that goes over the <laughs> over the front of the trousers is very very risque but i love the look of it Again, that yellow, that color, that, that yellow color of that suit on my black skin ooh, will look amazing. And again, I'm a fan of all of it. I'd wear the F out of the entire collection. Definitely recommend you check it out. Great styling, great casting. And again, here's man himself, Svana Pilati, walking the end of, at the end of the show himself as well with the, uh, with the camel overcoat, double-breasted, white tight pants, it looks like, and some uh, riding boots. Again, great collection. Uh, Sonny Petty. Oh, he, he, oh, he pronounced he he pronounced it at Petty. Okay, that's awesome. Definitely recommend you check it out. Again, one of my favorite collections out there at the moment. I think someone had a video here somewhere, right? Was it here? Oh, it was there in here, but it's not there anymore. But yeah, definitely recommend you check it out. One of my favorites out there at the moment. What else do we have here before we end? It's an hour already. Uh, oh, there's actually a video of the show. Actually, let's check out a little bit of video of the show. I think the song was weird, isn't it? It sort of like did this weird skip and a bounce. Actually, the song itself. I think it was um, what they call those songs? What they what, what, what do you call them? Oh, it's called a certain style. Anyway, it was done in a certain way. I forgot where it was. Very, very weirdly put together. I thought anyway. Maybe you guys don't think so, but I thought the song was a bit strange. Let's fast forward a bit. Yeah, it was like four or three tracks playing at the same time. I'm not sure what happened there, but yeah. I'm not gonna, I don't wanna get copyright strike with the music in the background, but yeah, that's the, this is the production. And of course, seeing stuff move in motion is always great. I think this is like when people say when you go to football games as opposed to watching it on TV, it's great to see. And I think clothes especially, getting to see how they move and hey, like even to see how the guy walks in those heels that I wanna get. You'll see, okay, these are really comfortable and they'd be amazing to wear on a dance floor. I would love to wear that Panama, but I'd be all over them, man. It's such a good shoe. So, yeah, recommend you check it out. Again, one of my favorite collections. It's fun to one of my favorite designers out there. And again, probably in the same realm as like an Adam Kimmel. If you're like a fashion head or if you know about brands and you know about designers, you know how important people like an Adam Kimmel are to men's world, to design in general. Yeah, that, that look there with the camel overcoat and the bucket hat is just banging, isn't it? That walk is fierce. Love it all. Definitely recommend you check it out. One of my favorites so far in the season. But yeah, that's an hour, man. We're out. It's an hour. I'll be back again tomorrow for an episode of the show. Until then, if you're watching via the YouTube channel, please click the link in the description. Go to my website, xenzinger.com for more information regarding myself. You'll find my Instagram profile, my Twitter. Be able to follow me on there. If you're listening via the podcast app, leave me a five-star review. Share the show on your iTunes. Share the show on your Twitter. Share the show on your Facebook. Let people know what I'm doing. And then I'll see you again very, very soon. I'll be able to show. I'm DJing on the fifth. No, 
on the 1st of February at the Heathcote and Star. So if you're around, come down there and check that out. And until, no, sorry, the Leighton Star, actually, the 1st of February. But check it out on my website, excellentsinger.com. You check the DJ gigs bit and I'll be all my listings will be on there where I play. But until then, see you guys again very, very soon. Thanks again for checking me out. And I'll be back again very soon. Peace. Bye.